Well, thank you. It's so great to be here. And Terrence, thank you so much for uh, being the chair here. And uh, Sandy, our president and CEO, for uh, being the chairman of the uh, um, of this Detroit uh, wonderful chamber. And of course, Henry's for serving as conference chair. And of course, Miller Canfield for sponsoring this event. I'm Terry Lynn Land, and I'm running for the United States Senate. And I want to start by telling you a little bit about myself and how I got started. I was born and raised in West Michigan. I grew up in Granville, where my grandpa Henry and grandma Jenny uh, started a family business after my grandfather had immigrated from the Netherlands. And after farming for a while, grandpa and grandma started their own business. Now they built this small motel and trailer park with their sons, my dad, Paul, and Uncle Bob. Now this was the early 1950s, and grandpa and grandma actually worked together as a team. They were partners. My grandma actually did the books. So every time grandpa and the boys would have an idea about maybe starting a new business or expanding their business, they'd have to go see grandma. And grandma would look at them, now you understand she was Dutch. She would go, how are you gonna pay for that? And I'll tell you, it was that mix of listening, fiscal responsibility, and working together that helped them be successful. Now I think we need a little more listening and fiscal responsibility and working together down in Washington, D.C. And I'd like to bring that. Now Governor Snyder is listening to folks here in Michigan. He's balanced the budget, he's put money in a rainy day fund, and his hard work and accomplishments are moving our state forward and they're making us the comeback state. Now, of course, Detroit is central to the success of our state. As Detroit goes, goes Michigan. And I know Detroit's been through some tough times. We all know that. But like Michigan, it's on the way back. Detroit is attracting new businesses. Young folks are coming downtown and moving in. I'll tell you, every time I'm downtown, I just get so excited about what's happening. I see a great future for Detroit and will work with everyone to help make Detroit a success. But I feel too often bad policies are coming from Washington, D.C. and are going to slow our comeback. That's why Governor Snyder needs a partner in Washington, D.C. Washington is broken, and now Washington is trying to break Michigan. I believe Washington has declared economic war in Michigan with high taxes, overregulation, gridlock. Government overreach is hurting Michigan families, jobs, and paychecks. The ability to start a business and build a future is in jeopardy. That American dream that my grandparents had, I believe, is now in jeopardy. And as a small business owner, I know that Obamacare's mandates and taxes are too expensive and will hinder growth. Workers are seeing their hours cut from full-time to part-time. Over 225,000 Michigan families have lost their health insurance despite being told they could keep their plans. And as we know, emergency visits are on the rise when we were told they would be falling. Many Americans lost their family a doctor, despite being told they could keep their plans and their doctors. And now countless families are forced to select from coverage plans that they don't need or can't afford, or simply the prices are too high. We need to repeal and replace Obamacare so once again we can have the best health care system in the world. I believe in health care reform that truly makes coverage affordable, accessible, and doesn't crush our economy. We need to allow people to buy insurance across state lines so that rates can be competitive. We need to extend the health savings accounts so that folks can have more control over their health care dollars. And we need to allow people to buy insurance plans with pre-tax dollars, the way employers do. And we need to make plans portable so they can be transferred to a new job. And we need to make sure that people with pre-existing conditions aren't denied quality and affordable coverage. And most importantly, we need to allow people to keep that patient-doctor relationship. That is very important. When you're going through a long-term illness, it is very important that you have that relationship. Washington's bad policies aren't just limited to health care. Federal policies are threatening our access to secure and affordable energy. And now, we have a billionaire radical from California pushing policies like cap and trade, a carbon tax that would increase gas prices by 20 cents, and would cost up to 96,000 Michigan jobs. If Washington were listening to Michigan voters, we would have built the Keystone Pipeline. I listened to Keith, who owns a business, Delta Industrial Valves in Niles, Michigan, and he told me he could hire more workers, and it would also create more jobs in his community if the Keystone Pipeline was built. A recent poll showed that two-thirds of Michigan voters support building the Keystone Pipeline because they know it will create American jobs, some right here in Michigan, and it will increase our American energy security. But the administration and Senator Reid are playing politics with the Keystone Pipeline. 
I believe we need policies that ensure Michigan business and Michigan families have available, low-cost, reliable energy. That's why I support all of the above approach to energy, and I will always advocate for more safe and reliable forms of energy that lower cost while still protecting our Great Lakes. It's clear that solutions are not coming from Washington. Let's bring them some Michigan solutions. As I listen to topics being discussed here today, advanced education, entrepreneurship, and legislation, that is where our solutions will begin. These are the tools that Michigan will need to advance and grow. And as we discuss solutions, I'd like to think back how when I first got involved. When I was 17, I volunteered for a guy named Gerald R. Ford who ran for president. Now, President Ford faced a divided country and a failing economy. And it's important to remember President Ford's warning not to expect too much from government. He said, a government big enough to give you everything you want is a government big enough to take away everything that you have. Solutions do not come from more government. Solutions come when government listens to the people and works with the people. If we're going to grow our diverse economy, we need to listen to small business owners, create an environment that encourages innovation and entrepreneurship, and I will work to provide relief for Michigan businesses so they can hire more workers, grow their business, and grow their economy. Taxes need to be lower, fairer, and simpler. I see firsthand that Michigan businesses spend way too much time and money and resources navigating the 73,000 pages of tax code. We need to have predictability so businesses can plan ahead and grow. As your senator, I will work to create opportunity in a level playing field. We need to end the practice of special interest perks and the government's picking winners and losers. When Washington raises taxes on one business in order to give a tax cut to another business, that's unfair. And this is common in Washington. Our state can compete with the best of them, and we can outwork them if Washington would just listen. I also believe in trade policies that benefit American workers and our allies. Today's global economy demands the ability to easily export our goods, services, and technology to the world. As a border state, Michigan understands the importance of international commerce, and that's why I support funding and building the Customs Plaza for the new international trade crossing. In the wake of 9-11 and increased security, Michigan needed a solution to get workers and products across our border with Canada. As Secretary of State, I worked with Homeland Security and the Department of State to create the enhanced driver's license. It made it easier to get across the border for folks to go back and forth. We should also work to attract the world's best and brightest by increasing the number of highly skilled workers in Michigan and allowing more H-1B visas. This will help us grow and make us stronger and competitive globally. We need government that works for the people rather than against them. It's clear Washington is not listening to Michigan. I believe in listening and because that's how you solve problems. When I was Secretary of State, I listened to my customers. If there was an issue, I listened to the people. We evaluated the problem, we took action, and we got things done. I didn't just write a letter or call for a study. We got things done. We put as many of our services as we could online, eliminated the need to come into Secretary of State office at all. And as Secretary of State, I partnered with business. Business is good. And government should work with business, as I did with our new car dealerships, to issue license plates directly at the dealership. The customer could purchase the new car and drive out with the new plates. We also partnered with commercial trucking and industry to get permanent trailer plates, to save businesses time and money. We installed 24-hour self-service stations so that people could update their registrations without having to take time off from work and family. We listened, we did what worked, and we, in the process, we made government work for the people once again. It's about understanding business and knowing how to work with them and making government more efficient. I also listened to the person who, people who work for me and instituted a series of programs to increase flexibility and a leadership training program that put more women on the path to management. Apparently, some call that a war on women. I wanted to make sure that the employees who spent eight hours a day in, in the office had the tools and resources to do their job because a happy employee makes a happy customer. And while every other government agency was cutting jobs to cope with the budget cuts, we were able to meet our budget without laying people off. We did what worked because we listened. And in the process, we made government work for the people once again. You know, people always ask me how I plan to get things done in such a partisan environment in Washington, D.C. 
Well, as you know, as Secretary of State, I had a Democrat governor and a House, but we were able to implement all our changes that we did at the Department of State. But the other thing is, is I also grew up in a family business, as I mentioned when I first started. And during the week, sometimes Grandpa and Grandma, and my dad Paul, and Uncle Bob, they didn't always agree on the direction of the business or what they were going to do and how it was going to work. So, you know, on Sunday, Grandma would make her pot roast at the back of the motel where she lived, and we'd all come together and we'd have dinner together. And we'd all get back on the same page, because we all understood that as a family, to be successful, we had to be in one direction, we had to listen to each other, and we had to work together. So now I believe that Washington needs to work and listen to families, business, and taxpayers. They need to get back on the same page. I will listen to you. I will evaluate the best options, take action, and get things done. I'm Terry Lynn Land. I'm a mom. I'm a business owner and a public servant. I'm asking for your vote so that I can proudly represent you in the United States Senate and serve this great state of Michigan. So thank you so much for coming. I appreciate the opportunity and look forward to a couple questions. Uh, my name is uh, Rob Castellou, and you mentioned repeal Obamacare, and I'm right here in front of you. Oh, there Sorry. you are. Okay. Uh, repealing Obamacare and replacing, what are some of your thoughts on what you would replace it with? Well, as I mentioned, oh, it does work. Okay, good. <laughs> as I mentioned in this, and when I spoke earlier, is that we need to do a few things. We need to make sure we can continue that patient-doctor relationship. That's just critical. Uh, we need to make it the more cost effective, um, being able to purchase it across state lines uh, so we can keep the cost down and have more options. Uh, we need to make sure we keep that pre-existing condition available when you get your next insurance. Um, and also, too, I think it's, it's just important that you have choice. And that needs to be what we need to do best. And we need to take care of those who cannot afford it. Um, so those are the kind of things that uh, I would propose and I would institute um, when we repeal Obamacare. Lindsay. Good morning, Secretary. My name is Marcy Brogan. Uh, I know you've taken some hits on social issues that might affect women. I've never seen anything or read anything about specifics about how you feel about this. I know some of your supporters have been vocal, but I'd like to ask you right now, how do you feel, you mentioned war on women. Mm -hmm. How would you answer your critics? Well, thank you for that question. I appreciate that opportunity. Um, you know, I have always supported women in everything I've done, whether it was uh, as a local clerk's office in business or the Secretary of State. I support equal pay for equal work. I always have. Uh, I've always encouraged women um, to move ahead and be successful. And we created programs at the county clerk's office that created flexibility for folks, men and women, and also a program that was helpful to, for men and women to get leadership training and to get the skills they needed to move up to management jobs. And I'm very proud of the fact when I left both the clerk's office and the secretary of state's office, we had more women managers than when I started. Jason. Hi, good morning. Um, Guy Williams. Right, right over here. Yeah, I see you. How are you? Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I was curious about your comment around um, the pipeline and safe energy. Um, there are many businesses that have started in Michigan in the last uh, decade around what many would call clean energy. Um, so my question is how do you um, size up those opportunities versus the pipeline which basically would support only one industry which is the Marathon Petroleum and uh, Refinery in Detroit, and the generation of pet coke there versus other types of uh, safe energy sources. Well, we need clay, safe and reliable energy, and I think it's important that we have security in our energy. Um, so we need to have as many options available. You know, we have the auto industry that uh, needs fuel to uh, produce our great cars. We have families who are, uh, you know, are hurting here in Michigan, and we can't allow the prices of gas and oil to go up. Uh, so we need to have that. And it's about jobs. I mean, as I mentioned, Keith, um, who's in Niles, he would be able to uh, have more jobs, and his community would also. So it's about jobs. It's about making sure we have safe and clean energy. And it's about security. And I think all those things are very important. And over 70% of Michigan actually wants and supports the Keystone Pipeline. And that's what I would vote for. Thank you. Hi, I'm Patty Poppy from Consumers Energy. Um, Secretary, we've had success with uh, a program called uh, Helmets to Hard Hats, which is uh, to employ veterans. I'm curious what your 
ideas are and what your thoughts are on re-employing our veterans in Michigan businesses. Well, thank you. No, it's very important. We need to respect um, those veterans that have served our country and we need to honor them. And by doing that, we can help them with job skill training or with education. And I think that should be a priority. We, they deserve the best. Uh, my father and my husband's father are both veterans. And I have a cousin who was in the military also. She served too. And I think it's very important that we do do that for our veterans. So that would be something that I would support and work with uh, to make sure that they had the services, the skilled trades, and the education they need to get a good paying job. Because we need that here in Michigan, and we need those veterans because they have the skills. They're very organized people. Anybody would be honored to have them uh, working with their uh, company or business. So that would definitely be a priority. Jason, back there. Oh, I'm yes, sorry. my name is Otis Jones. It's a, a somewhat of a veteran question as well. My, my nephew just got back from serving three tours uh, in the two wars, Afghanistan and Iraq. And I happened to be talking to him over the holiday. And uh, their fear is how they transition back, given uh, the struggles that they have mentally from the experiences in the war. Um, what would be your policy on dealing um, with some of the mental challenges that our soldiers and our young people have? I happened to read an article in the paper this morning that said 60% of the homeless people um, in our country are veterans. So what are your thoughts about assisting in those two areas? Well, that, that's two things. One is the veterans facilities that we have need to be able to um, have timely, uh, you know, not these long wait times. They need to be able to get in and see a doctor. And if they can't, um, they ought to be able to have the option to go out into the private side and, and be able to do it there. And I see that the Veterans Administration now is allowing that. Um, but they need to get the care they need. There's a lot of new, uh, new opportunities out there to deal with those types of health issues, to help those uh, veterans get back and integrate into society and get a good paying job and be able to have a family and, and have that American dream. So um, that should definitely be a priority. With more and more soldiers coming back, I think it's important that we do make that a priority and that we have the services available in a timely manner um, for our veterans and to coordinate with the state too. There's a lot of a lot of state and local programs um, that are out there. The counties, as you know, I used to be the county clerk. We had a veterans office in the county. Um, one of the things, too, that I've seen, too, in fact, I was on the phone with the county commissioner in Kent County just on the way up here yesterday, and they were talking about those issues and feeling that some of those things weren't addressed. So they're actually going to upgrade their program in Kent County um, as far as uh, putting more resources towards it uh, to serve the veterans locally. Um, to me, locally seems the best way to do that, where your family and friends are. We all know that you can best get healthy when you've got that family network and support. Um, so to me, as the federal government could help the states and the local government so they could stay in their communities and get that support that they need. Jason. What's your position on the proposed regulatory changes to the internet? Are you a fan of the FCC's current hands-off net neutrality approach, or are you a fan of working with the larger internet service providers to um, allow faster service to companies that can uh, afford to pay for it and slower service to companies that can't? I think the internet should be free. <laughs> you know, it is a great source of information. It's the opportunity for people to talk. I'm a Twitter fan. I'm on Twitter. Um, and it's a great way to connect with people. So um, I think that's a very important part of this, and especially in emerging countries and growing uh, communities. Um, it's a way to uh, actually communicate, and I think it's, it's very important to have that available to everyone. We have a question behind you, Lindsay. Okay. Somebody hiding in the back. Hi, Bob Kittle with Auburn Hills. I think we all agree the need for fiscal stewardship out of Washington, but at the same time we have a lot of challenges, particularly with the regard to our aging transportation and infrastructure systems across the country. How are we going to handle that uh, dichotomy? Well, first of all, we ought to be able, I'm sure you can talk about roads. Yes. First of all, <laughs> first of all, we want to make sure that we get our fair share back from Washington. That's no doubt. So I would fight to do that. Um, then also to partner with our state and our governor um, and our local units to make sure that we can help them effectively use the resources that they have and combined and, and work together to make sure that happens. I mean, I understand. I drive those roads too across our great state every day. And uh, we need to have good roads, good transportation for our trucking industry, for our tourism, for all of that, um, and our farmers too. 
um, and make sure that uh, you know they can get their product across our uh, roads and, and deliver it to their customers. So um, I would definitely be a priority on that. I know that I can read the polls too. And uh, we see on there that that is number one priority in Michigan. So we want to partner with our great governor and get that done. We have time for one more question. One more question. Bueller. Bueller. No? Really? Thank you so much. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, Hank Cooney. No, Hank Cooney. There we go. Mr. just a quick follow up on that last issue. The, uh, Hank Cooney, um, and I'm chair of the conference and on the board of the oh, chamber. Yeah. Thank you. Um, on that last issue, the state of, or the House of Representatives just passed a bipartisan bill in their state to raise revenue to fund one, one and a half billion dollars worth of road improvements and other infrastructure improvements in Michigan, waiting to see what the Senate does on, on that. The question is, um, are you supportive of that type of, uh, because that's going to cost people money. It's going to cost us money at the, at the pump. Is that something uh, in a bipartisan fashion that you'd be supportive of? Well, first of all, we need to get that through the process as we did, uh, you know, any legislative uh, initiative and action. Um, so it, that's a state issue. I will help from the federal side where we can, but that's a state issue with their resources. They need to make their own decisions on that. So we'll let them have that play out, and then we'll see how that works. And, you know, whatever way we can help at the federal level is what we do. Well, that's it. I'd like thank to you. thank um, Secretary Land for joining us. Thank you, sir. That's great. Thank you.